All right, so what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JNL Garage. So, this is the same day that we put in the radio in the new build, the Tacoma. Um, and hopefully by now, oh, about dropped the camera. Hopefully by now, some of you guys have commented as to what we're going to be doing to this thing. But today, I'm going to be going over some maintenance issues that are probably a common thing on these trucks. And for someone just starting out on one of these, uh, I, I would hope that it would be able to help you. So the first problem that I want to address is uh, my heater. So my heat is on 24-7. It doesn't matter where I move the thermostat. It's, it's blowing hot. And the way that is controlled on these older Tacomas, this is a 96, is there is a cable right here. And this is nothing but a valve to either let hot water in or not to your heater core inside the actual truck. Um, now the cable and all is working. I've, uh, I've already confirmed that. Uh, you know, that's pretty easy. You can just go in there, move it one way or the other, remember where it's at. Take a picture if you want, and then come back. So, with that being said, with it being mounted so high and the way the hoses are routed, I'm going to try and take off one side or the other, see if I can see inside of here. I think it's just going to be built kind of like a ball valve. Um, and I'm going to see if the valve is actually opening and closing with the cable with the lever on the front or if something's actually broke internally, or I haven't thought about this, the screw that actually holds that arm on to the mechanism on the inside may be slipping, uh, which means that everything is actually working like it's supposed to, other than the screw's not tight enough in order to actually get it to function properly. So we're gonna diagnose that first, and then we will move on to an O2 sensor, which we have to put in the exhaust. All right, so I ended up taking this side off, as you can see. Now this is the incoming side, um, from what I can tell. And it, when I actuated the valve back and forth, I did see, you know, what looked like something internally moving, doing, you know, what it was supposed to, which means there's no breakage from here to the actual valve itself. Uh, so I did a little more investigating and what I did find is as you can see here, this is the full extent of The lever that's that's the full action of the lever right there to shut now as you can see on the arrow here This is shut on the valve Now With this lined up let's see if I can do this with one hand. I think I can with this lined up and this is the full action of that lever, right? Okay, that is where the valve stops. Now, if I pull this off, the valve still has a little bit to go. Now, I did end up tightening this screw up. It was a little loose, but with that little bit of action right there, I'm wondering if it's just managing to barely trickle enough you know, with it in this position here, if it's just managing to trickle enough hot water in that core to keep it warm once the engine comes up to temp. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this arm off and see if it has multiple teeth where I can, I can set it in a different position. And I'm going to try and line it up since the valve is physically all the way shut right now. We're gonna take this screw off take the arm off see if we can line it up better with the end of the cable and then from there we'll put it back on the valve and then I'm going to try it like that in the morning uh, whenever I get ready to head to work or something uh, and then we're gonna actually try that before I just try replacing this guy um, because I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it unless it's got some corrosion on what look like plastic components on the inside and it's just letting coolant go by no matter what. But we'll try this first. Hopefully this fixes our problem and saves us a little bit of money. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll move on. All right, so 
I ended up uh, getting it all put back together, but what I actually ended up doing was adjusting my cable here. Uh, this little spring clip is, is very easy to get off. You just pry at the bottom, it will pop off the bottom of this bracket. It's got two teeth in it that hold this cable from moving when you're actuating it. Um, and then I just gave it just enough throw to where it's got a little bit of slack in it here and the valve is fully shut. Let me pop that back in. Um, so hopefully this cures our issue. Uh, you won't be able to do anything with this arm because it is actually mounted onto uh, a square, uh, square, whatever. Uh, so if you tried to rotate it, it'd be like another 90 degrees. It wouldn't help you any. Um, be careful with your plastic clips. As you can see, I broke one. Um, I broke this one just now. Old, brittle, 90s plastic. They just didn't do well with heat. Um, but nonetheless, hopefully this fixes our heating issue. If not, our valve is going to be bypassing internally, um, even when it's mechanically all the way shut. So with that being said, since we are done up here, we're going to move on to doing an O2 sensor. So I have an engine code on the truck as of right now that is for bank one sensor two. Uh, which is the downstream heater bank, I believe is what they call it. Um, I'm not sure what all this O2 sensor actually monitors. Uh, you can probably Google it. I just know that mine is currently not working. All right, so she was just up and running. I obviously shut it off so that you guys can hear me clearly. I don't have to yell. And no engine code popped back up if i'm not mistaken the first time i tried to clear the engine codes uh for the speed sensor and the o2 sensor the engine light came back on immediately it immediately threw uh, another engine code and i didn't end up checking it because i was kind of in a hurry ready to ready to go right um and so i'm guessing that it was probably for that o2 sensor again just not giving any feedback back to the ECU. Um, that didn't happen this time. I'm sure it, that the engine code is going to come back on when I start moving for the speed sensor. However, I'm going to keep my OBD2 reader in there since I'm taking this to work the next day or two. Uh, and that way, when the engine light comes back on, whether I'm getting ready to leave work or whatever, I can check and see if the fault has came back for that O2 sensor or not. Um, and then real quick, I'm going to jump under there and check for leaks, and I'm going to check all my air pressure and my tires. Um, but other than that, that pretty much sums it up for this video. I'll have to get back with you guys at you know in a later video on the truck on whether or not that fixed my heater issue or not. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll, it, I'll either completely forget about it because it started working or there'll be a video come up where I'm going to be replacing this valve. Um, so, and I'll see about that, you know, at a later date, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and even though it doesn't take this thing long, I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to get completely warm just to see if that worked or not. Um, so I'm gonna throw some air in the tires and then I've got to get home and get in the bed because I've got work. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are looking forward to the new build. I know we've just been kind of doing some basic stuff right now, but I'm still making up my mind on what we wanna do and I'm waiting on your guys' feedback at this very moment. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. And uh, as always, hope you guys have a good one.